Please put your hands together and help welcome your chief visionary officer and co-founder, Mr. Wayne. I don't, does, does that bring back any memories for any of you? Say what we were going. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in. I got the joy, joy, joy. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Down in my heart to what? Yeah, all right. Oh. Are you enjoying the ride? Oh, man. Me too. I, I'm just so proud of everybody, you know? And I'm, and I'm always grateful, you know? I'm, I'm always happy and grateful and excited to see the way you all, you know, are treating each other and playing together and, and creating together. It, it, what we're doing is unique. It's special. It's amazing, isn't it? For a long time, you know, people used to just see me and relate me to happiness. Yay! You know. <laughs> And that's kind of a big deal. I like being happy. I like, if somebody's going to think of you, think, okay, that guy's, that guy's a happy guy. I've had people in the past say, there's no way that guy's that happy. And they come around and hang out and go, okay, yeah, he's that happy. That and silly. So you can see right here, happiness is a mental or emotional state of well-being characterized by positive or pleasant emotions ranging from contentment to intense joy. Okay, so that is a definition of happiness, and it's good, I like that. But I think there's something more. Uh, you know, I'm a big Walt Disney fan. Yay! You know, he, he, he was a creator. He does make a lot of happy people happy, but it's in their vision statement, you know, we create happiness. And so as much as I like the word happy and happiness, I just really believe that there's something more. There's something bigger. And, and, and we get a real sense of that, you know, here with each other this weekend. And that's joy. A lot of people don't know, they don't make the distinction between happiness and joy. You with me? I think it's important that you, that you really understand the difference. You know, as a quick example, you know, I remember Mike and I talking about the difference between greed and ambition. Because I was struggling with how do I maintain some drive and some ambition in life? And ambition, it's about intent. It's about what are you wanting to do and wanting to create with other people for the benefit of other people. Greed is... What are you trying to do for yourself at the expense of other people? You understand? Joy, what makes it different than happiness? Look right here. Joy warms a person's heart, while happiness merely pleases. Happiness brings pleasure, but joy brings true contentment in one's heart. It's like if you won the lottery, if you won $10,000 in the lottery, that would make you happy. But what you all do to earn $10,000, 
and, and help each other, that's joy. Happiness is, you know, winning the lottery. Joy is, you know, the birth of a child. And we have so many World Ventures babies being born. And whenever I see that, so many wonderful marriages that got created, so many wonderful kids being born, our kids growing up together, it is. It, it, it's, it's way beyond happy. So to put it into other terms, I don't know if you remember this from high school or psychology class, but Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you familiar with this? So there's the physiological, which is basically uh, food, oxygen. Uh, I don't think that even includes like shelter and clothes, but maybe just but it's just, you're in, it's survival. And then you move up to safety, where you do have a roof over your head, and, and, you, and, and, and you are able to, you know, protect your family. Then you start moving up, and you get into love and belonging, and then self-esteem, and you're feeling good about yourself. Then you get into self-actualization. And when you come to the view and you experience all these characters and you see all these leaders and where they were before and where they're at now and you hear their stories, you can see how they progressed. When you look at our product and it's all about peak experiences, whenever I explain this to people and I uh, describe the difference between you know, a vacation and a dream trip, the dream trip is all about the experience that we at World Ventures want to create. And it is different. It's important that you know how to articulate the difference between a vacation and a dream trip. But do you see where joy is up there with self-actualization? This is a, another self-assessment that we ask you to do. And you can see how it progresses. When you do the personality test, when you join us early on and you do the personality test and you, and you see if you're a red shark or a blue dolphin, a, a yellow whale or a green urchin, that's how it's kind of described sometimes. They're all good. They're all important. What's most important is you become self-aware. So you kind of know thyself and to thine own self be true. And you can play to your strengths and partner with your weakness. Well, this is another self-assessment that you could and should do. And you got to be honest with yourself so that you can see where you're at and where you want to grow to. But the five stages of tribal leadership from the book Tribal Leadership, number one, the mentality and the, and the uh, sadly, a big group of people around the world in society is, you know, all life sucks. Just life sucks and then you die. And then some people progress past that and they look out beyond themselves and they realize, okay, well, not all life sucks, you know, just mine, <laughs> you know. There's a lot of people out there that, that you know, it's okay, they got, they got it better than I do. So it's really just my life that sucks. So stage three leadership is uh, I'm great. It can be very egocentric leadership. And I look at this like, if I said, if you could be any animal, you know, aspire to an animal, what, what animal resonates with you? And if you would have asked me that in the past, of course, being blue, I'd say dolphin. <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of times when I'm talking about moving my way up or so, that I, I really kind of a lot of times think about uh, an eagle I mean, I used to really resonate with eagle, you know? And uh, we, we use that analogy of, you know, don't be with the chickens and whatever in the dirt and all that. But So it makes sense that people want to strive to a level three leader and become an eagle, right? What's better than that? How about, does anybody ever say, does anybody say, if you ask them what animal do you want to be or identify with? Does anybody ever say 
a goose? <laughs> Does anybody, you know, do you ever say, I want to be a goose? <laughs> but wouldn't it be cool if we did? Because when you, when you stop and look at how geese treat each other, it's awesome. The way they play team. You know, they fly in that V formation, and there's always one side longer than the other. You know why that is? There's more birds on that side. So that's beside the point. But they're, vi- they're flying that V formation because it, the lead bird cuts drag by 40 to 70%. And this was the theory. But you know what they did? They did tests where they took heart monitors and put them on birds and let them do that, and they proved it. It cuts drag by up to 40, 50%, that they fly a lot further, a lot faster, working together as a team. And if one of the, one of the geese happens to uh, get sick or hurt or injured and falls out, two other geese go down with it and take care of it. And then when it's healthy enough, they rejoin, they fly as a team in a smaller V formation, and go. And that's what I saw happen, you know, with uh, Kim Eaton. I saw how, and, and, and how our people fell out of formation and went and hung out with Kim and took care of her. And through the years, how you all have been able to do that with one another. You build those kind of relationships Whenever I see that, I'm not happy about that. I'm joyful about that. So I bring that up because, yes, we want you to be great. We want you to hit stage three leadership and you feel good about yourself and confident about yourself. But you're just one. But when you can come together and we can work as a team and be a flock of geese, it's really a better analogy for the kind of success that we create with one another. And then when we learn to think about that, now you can say, okay, what if eagles actually learn to fly in V formation? Might be a little bit more powerful dynamic. But what's happening is when you come here on a weekend like this, and, and this is kind of that leadership development factory, and you start to see, you know, how, how are we playing team together? How are we co-creating? How, how is this becoming more and more real, more and more tangible? And you start to see how we all can go to stage five leadership together. And we believe that we can make a change in the world. We can make a dent in the universe. But what I want to talk to you about joy. Happiness is from the outside. It's external. Joy is internal. And if you're not experiencing joy, I want you to really think about it and contemplate. I want you to feel really connected. And, of course, I believe in God and I thank God and I see little miracles. It's hard for me not to believe in God. (laughs) I see the miracles. It's crazy. And I don't I don't, want, I don't want you to sin against yourself. I don't want you to become separated from joy. And I don't know what that might be for some people, but we want, we want to raise leaders, you know, that, that have integrity. That, yeah, integrity, you know. I, um... You know, I'm grateful, um, you know, for my wife, my baby girl. 
Um, Susan, hey, honey. You know, your spouse knows you best, right? That's who you're with all the time. And your kids see you. It's important that you care about being whole so that you can set that right example. And, um, you know, I, I know my wife knows me. I know the kind of parents we want to be to our little girl. And so I'm going to show you something right now that when I first saw this, you know, it hurt. It hurt. It didn't, it didn't hurt me for us or business. It hurt me for you. And it, I'm only bringing this up as an example. And I can understand why and how something like this could happen. Um. We do these events, and they cost money, right, to rent this arena and do all this kind of stuff. And what if we didn't have these events? Would we miss it? So in this box, there's a lot of, you know, uh, fake counterfeit wristbands. And I can appreciate the creativity and the ingenuity (laughs) You know, it's like, it's, I want to, it's really, I'm, we're, we're happy that people want to go to this length to be here. <laughs> we, we also think Mark is that good. <laughs> and this event is that important. And I can relate because, like, when I was in the Marine Corps, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I lived, I lived in the barracks, and I lived in this open squad bay, and oh, it's just, it's, it's, ugh, it's bad. <laughs> Living under this room with all these Marines farting and smoking and snoring, and it's just not good. And so I was motivated, and when I was motivated, my God-given creativity kicked in. And so I go out in the town, And uh, I work a deal with a pizza place, and I get a medium pepperoni and sausage pizza for uh, $4, and I buy 10 or 20 at a time and run them back to base and sell them for $8 in the barracks for all the guys that miss chow. And uh, so I double my money, and I could do that two, three, four times a night. And so then as a Marine, and and it doesn't pay that well you know, being in the military, especially as a private, in a private first class and these lower ranks. And so um, I started doing this, and then uh, I was making enough money to get a beach house. Woohoo! So having this beach house, and I do have roommates, so I've, I've become friends because I'm happy and I'm friendly, and I meet these civilian guys, and we, we become roommates, and we have a beach house together. And our place was kind of the place to be. And, uh, and my friends, they worked at the dry cleaners. They worked at the uh, movie theater. They worked at the grocery store. So I hate to admit it, but we used to hook each other up, you know. Uh, I didn't pay for movies or popcorn, you know. I, I, uh, all my dry cleaning, I didn't pay for any dry cleaning. So these businesses, you know, These were the employees, and we would just hook each other up. It was kind of a a thing to do. There's a, you know, if I look back on it, it was out of integrity, you know. So I just bring that up as a small example. When I think about some of the people on our team and what they had to go through to become IMDs, it blows my mind. It does create a lot of joy. And I'm only bringing this up because I don't want to rob, I don't want you to rob yourself of joy, I want you to be happy about yourself and proud of yourself. And little things like this tear, tear apart, tear yourself apart. So, um, you know, Dave and Yvette Yaloa, uh, <laughs> you know, we met, they'd won a dinner. I remember we're at this at this dinner, and, and uh, there was this, we were, uh, Dr. Chose or Chow's, 
Mr. Chow's in L.A. This is like a really good restaurant. So they want to sell us dinner. We're upstairs, private room. All these movie stars and stuff go there and all this, right? We got this so they, they're sitting across the table. They get their notepad. And they come around the table to sit down and they muscle their way in and sit down and scoot somebody over. I don't know. And they're just there and they're asking questions and they're learning and they're taking their notes and all this. And so that was my first experience. I didn't really know them and they were nice people. But before that, and the reason they were so motivated is uh, Dave was a police officer. Yvette Yulo worked for the city of Burbank. And, and sadly, they were separated. They weren't living together. Uh, at a time, at a time. And, and it was sad to even consider that one day maybe this incredible couple that we see was maybe going to get a divorce. Uh, but then they, you know, they did come together, they did join, and uh, they went to work and built goals together. But his job, being a police officer, was so negative. Her job, she used to She used to go on her breaks at work, she'd go cry. Sunday nights, when it was time to go back to work, she would cry. Um, when the stress and different things that she had to, she was in the hospital with an ulcer. The job, they didn't send her a card, a get well card or flowers. They sent her work to the hospital. That's crazy. A good person, working a good, stable government job. To, to go, they used to go to Vegas for the weekend just to get away, just to try and create some happiness for a little bit. And they would go stay at like a cheap hotel in Vegas. And that was what they would try and do to sneak away to have just some happiness in their life. But between being a police officer, between being and missing each other and this and that, can you, can you picture it? And isn't that different than where they're at today? And the reason I wanted to use them as an example, because every time I see, every time we do awards and recognition, I always call Yvette, she's the number one cheerleader in the company. It doesn't matter if you're in her downline or not. The way she cheers and jumps up and down and gets excited, you know, I know they're not in her downline, but she cheers for them like they are. I mean, she goes nuts. It's awesome. <laughs> so, so when I see where they were and I see what they've accomplished now, and I've watched the changes through the years and how powerful they are in the lives they're changing, that doesn't make me happy. <laughs> it brings joy to my heart. You know my friend Jeff and Cindy Boff? Man. I mean, triple IMD? If you talk to them, they'll tell you the story about, I mean, they had nothing. I mean, you already know that, you know, at one time, Troy's going to go do a meeting, talk about how to make some money in life and get rich, woo, doing this. You know, they come and shut off his water. He's got shampoo in his hair and all that. Y'all might already know that one. At times, they don't have food to eat. Literally, Jeff is fishing for dinner, or it's ramen noodles again. And Cindy's over there cheering him on. And as the sun's going down, he's fishing faster and faster. He had, to go buy, he had to go catch the crickets, put them on a hook, go fishing to try to catch a fish for dinner. And now he's a triple IMD? It's inspirational, and that brings joy. My buddy Jefferson, you know, I remember when he lived in a one-bedroom apartment with his mom, 
when I met him. And, and he, had a, he had this little, little car with these bald tires. And literally the wires are sticking out. And he asked me, do I use my money to buy tires or do I pay for this training? I said, it's up to you. <laughs> you know what I meant. It's a personal choice. And so he did what he had to do. He got creative. He, he, went, he went and did these best chess contests. <laughs> <laughs> He would win, man. He would win. It's a shame. So funny. So I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying we understand. And the best thing you can do is if you, if you did this or you bought one, you just admit it. You just admit it, and we got no problem. And the reason why isn't for us. Isn't to front you out, point you out, punish you. No. The only reason I'd ask you to do that is for your soul. Because sin means miss. Miss the mark. And all you, it's a mistake. but it's, it's what starts to create separation. It's what makes joy hard to find. And I don't want joy to be hard for you to find. Yeah. Uh. Are you getting a sense of the difference between happiness and joy? So y'all know, I, I just... I, I, we care about the all of you. We don't just care about your group size and your check. We want you to succeed in all areas of your life. You build people and people build the business. We want to build you and have an, an impact on every area of your life. You're spiritual, you're physical, you're emotional, you're intellectual, you're financial. We want you to care about the all of you, not just your financial. And that's how you build a company on rock, not sand. And when you do that, when you do that, you can weather any storm. You can weather any storm. And there's there's going to be competition that comes. They look at our success. They look at our ideas. They're going to come and try and steal from us in some way. And in, I don't like processes like that. Processes like that hurt me. They even scare me a little bit. I get fearful. But then when I talk to my friends, they say, don't worry, Wade, we got your back. <laughs> it makes me feel not scared, not afraid, not alone. It's like... The leadership team that we have here is unbelievable. Anytime there's ever been a problem or a bad economy or anything, it just doesn't matter. This leadership team just rallies and comes together. And do we lose some people along the way? Yeah, we do. And the way I look at that, you know, I go to faith and I just see it as we're shaking out impurities. And that's what I can tell you most about this company that I know, that this company has just gotten better and better and better, stronger, stronger, stronger. And so I care about what you talk about in here, what you pray about. And I want you to enjoy the ride. I love you. God bless you.